Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me again today. Um, today, I have very special guest, Paula Forrester, um, who is a psychic. Um, are you a psychic or a medium or both? I'm an extra large. Okay. <laughs> yes, oh my. Um, and, and Danny Parko, who is actually a private detective. And I really wanted Hi. some of her input as well about the Watts case. Thank you, girls, so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I know people have been looking forward to it. Um, Bumblebee says this should be interesting. It certainly should be. We're going to see what uh, what these ladies have to say about everything. Um, I guess. Uh, if you guys want to start with telling me a little bit of your um, your private business, or they're not private, they're public, but about your business, um, Paula, what what exactly do you do for um, your clients? Well, I'm a professional psychic and a medium. Before that, I've been doing Paula's that for frozen. 35 years. I'm also a Wiccan high priestess. Um, before that, okay. and during that, I was a uh, professional publicist in Manhattan, book publicity and entertainment publicity. And for a while, I worked for Danielle and her father at uh, Parco Investigations. Sorry. Sorry. I worked wow. for them for a little while. So that's how I know Daddy. And uh, so awesome. I've, had, uh, I've had a plethora of life experience. That's amazing. That is so amazing. I love what you do. And um, I get a little bit of the psychic stuff myself, but I can't do it on command. It just kind of hits me in the face and I don't know how to control it or get it when I need it. Um, and, and Danielle, why don't you tell us about your business and what you do? It's so fascinating, both you gals. So I'm a New York State licensed private investigator. I've been one for over like 35 years. Um, wow. Yeah, and it's a, it's a fair, I, you know, I started working with my father and I just took over his business now. Recently, he, he just recently retired. Oh, wow. Sure. And, and I always wanted and to be what's a private the name of your business, Danielle? What's the name of your business? The name it's of your Parco. company? It's Parco and Associates. Okay. And you're an active name. investigator. I mean, anyone can yes. call you. And I, you told me, I believe, on the phone that you, you're only licensed in New York State. Is that correct? Correct. I am only licensed in New York State. Okay. So um, you probably couldn't help us much with the Colorado case, but I do want your opinions. Um, and I know that one of our Grey Gardens fans, Paula, I met Paula because Walter Newkirk, a mutual friend, a wonderful guy who's called Mr. Grey Gardens, he um, had talked to Paula about doing a seance related to Grey Gardens and um, the Beale family, you know, Edith Beale and her daughter Edie. And um, people accuse me of hiring Paula. I didn't even know Paula. <laughs> I don't remember that? The, you know, I, I, I got to say, I've known Paula for like at least 20 something years, at least 20 something years from now. And she More is than that. all the time. She is, uh, uh, she's right on top of everything. Yeah. She knows she's everything about everything. Me. And every day I text her, I'm like, what's going on with my love life? What's going on? <laughs> That's awesome. I know I had a private question for her, but um, someone told me not to ask that. So I kind of cut it off. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, Paula, now with the Beale family, they, they were, I know that um, Lee Radswell and Jackie Onassis were actually the cousins of Edie Beale and the nieces of um, Edith Beale Sr. Right, right. And um, I know that when poor Peter Beard, Peter Beard, wildlife photographer, um, famous in the 60s and the 50s, and I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure before that as well, um, for taking his wildlife photographs in Africa. And he also um, was famous for dating Princess Lee Redswell shortly after, you know, during her divorce from the prince. Mm -hmm. um, and he disappeared a couple months ago. He right. was 82, and I believe he had dementia. And he simply wandered away from his home in Long Park, um, you know, on Long Island. And um, I asked Paula, what, what do you see? Where is this man? Because he was, you know, reported as missing. And without a breath, she said he's dead. I'm like, oh, no, are you sure? What? And so, you know, Paula gave me this description that this poor man was lying face down in a bunch of grass or some kind of, you know, reeds or wildlife near water, and he had passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and she was right on the money. About two weeks later, he was found in exactly that state near water yeah. in a bunch of tall grass, you know, right. 
how, right. do, you, how do you do that, Paula? What the heck? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just get visions. That's the amazing. energy comes to me. I get a little mental vision of the person based okay. on their name. And um, I just saw him lying face down in these tall kind of reedy grass. Right. You could smell the water. You could hear the water from where he was. Wow. He was out in nature. Um, there was some sort of outbuilding to his right, but it wasn't a house. It was like a structure. Sure. It was, was in a park. Water. Big, big and, um, park he was just, he died of exposure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You are, you are amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I was going to put that up on our great gardens page, but um, one of the great gardeners said, no, don't because his family still has hope. Right. Um, and then, so he found again, like a, about a week later, and that was exactly how he was discovered. And you're, you're simply amazing. I mean, thank you. I can't, thank I you. can't believe every police department doesn't hire you right now, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and Danny, um, you do private investigation. We're going to need some help with this Watts case. Primarily, we're looking at, and I know that you, you're not licensed in Colorado, unfortunately, um, but the Nicole yeah, Messenger was the mistress. And we did. Right. Um, oh, you're yeah. freezing. Are, are, can you hear me still? I can, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. We, right. We spoke about her and about the case, and you indicated that you can't really practice in Colorado. Which is fine, but I could. Have but um, in your Colorado. professional opinion, yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know people in Colorado. I'm sorry. You're you're breaking up now. Oh, am I? Should I move? Yeah, it might be me, and I always think it's someone else. But yeah, you're you're sporadically speaking. Yeah, I'm out. I apologize. I'm outside. I'm at my friend's. My friend Kathy's her birthday, so I want to say hello to Kathy. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday, Kathy! And we're, at Aww. we're at our house. We're at our house. Social distancing. Um, sure. But, um, yeah, I'm not licensed in Colorado. I do have con a lot of contacts, you know, within the investigative community in Colorado. And I, wonderful. Could, I could also assist in Colorado. That's wonderful. Because I think we might need to hire you. Um, what we're doing, we're trying to find, I mean, my main concern about Nicole Kessinger is if we can find out if she was at work on August 13th, 2018, from early in the morning until three o'clock when she clocked out, we know she was not present for the murder of Chris Watts' family, to the beautiful Shanann and his daughters, um, baby Cece, Celeste, and Bella, and her his unborn baby, Nico, who was, you know, he was a 15 week old fetus at the time. But if we can prove that this woman, NK or Nicole Kessinger, was at work during her regular work day, um, and I'm sure some private investigator can come up with that answer. And I'm going to ask Paula about that in a minute too. But do you, I mean, what would you charge us to just get that answer from Anna Darko is the location where with, she worked? I think with this, it's a small, I believe it's a small town in Colorado. I believe everybody, it's Frederick, Colorado is yeah. right. Anna Darko is in another small town, right? I believe that everybody works together, so they probably will cover for her. Um, meaning that if you, you know, if you blindly call somebody up, they'll say, "Yeah, she was working." I think you really physically need to be in Colorado and okay. feel the people out. You know, make friendly with them, make friends with them. Um, you know, you can't call up somebody and say, "Hey, I'm a licensed private investigator. Tell me what you know." People right. will be like, hey, "I don't have to talk to you," and they don't. Right. You know, my lord, we're just. You know, you're not entitled. We're not pleased to or not anything like that. We're no, we're not anything. Right, right. Right. So I think it's best to maybe be, go into the town, make friends with the people. You know, sure. it's, probably, it's probably like the biggest um, sensation that they had in their town. It is. It's the biggest. Okay. Well, since the John Bonet case um, in Boulder. Um, and there's been other Colorado crimes that are horrific, too. It all happens in Colorado. Don't know why. Um, maybe <laughs> well, it's the water. But. Yeah. So perhaps it would be to our advantage to, if you don't mind, if you can get me a name or two of some investigators out in Colorado, we could probably solicit their help. You know, if you if you could do that, just text it to me or whatever. I'd appreciate it. You know, thank you. I definitely could. I definitely could. But I would also oh, awesome. if somebody out of state, I would actually, we'd have to guide them and say, look, this is what we want. Sure. This is what we know. Sure. You know. You can't have like a rough cop type of mentality. You have to have no. very personable to come in and make friends and say, hey. Sure. You know, right. Hi. What's the, what do you know? You know? Like, you know yeah. You can't just go. 
they'll, they'll be spooked. Okay. I'm sure they will be. Um, and Paula, what is your psychic impression about that? Was Nicole Kessinger at work all day or did she, she did I not clock she in that morning. I think she did leave for an hour from work. She told people she was taking a lunch break and she did leave the premises for an hour. Okay. That's where I'm picking up that she did leave for an hour. What time did she say she was there from? Um, I'm assuming, well, someone said they saw her in the break room at 6.30 that morning, but the weird thing is that her phone pinged in the tiny town or the small town of Frederick uh, at 6.30 in the morning where the murders had just happened about an hour or so earlier. Now, Chris yeah. is already out at the oil site getting rid of his, you know, dead family right. by 6.30 when she would have driven. I think she stalked the family. I think that's a, you know, a crazy thing to do. Sure. Who pinged her phone? Was it law enforcement or was it somebody that was hired to ping her phone? No, um, they pulled her um, her cell phone records and it was all of her pings and all of her locations were right there. The, the uh, law enforcement did pull those records. Okay. And um, she pinged in Frederick, Colorado at 617, I wanna say. Um, in my opinion, the woman was stalking the family because she had this obsession with her boyfriend who was married, Chris Watts, um, and she knew that Shannon had come home from a business trip the night before. And my interpretation is that she didn't believe Chris's story. She thought that they, the family was going to be together, hanging yeah. out, doing something. Is that what you think, Paula, too? There's a missing hour there somewhere. There's an hour that she's not being truthful about. Really? Yes. Okay. You think she met him? I think she might have met him in that hour. Yes. Yes. Wow. You think so? Yes. And do you think she had knowledge of, of what he had done or prior knowledge or after the fact, Paula? Yes. Or yes. Definitely. You do. Yes. yes. Okay. I have to I have to agree with Paula because one, Paula is always right. Two, she is. <laughs> and two, you know, she has a relationship with this guy. Um, he's telling her all these stories. Um, well, she supposedly she didn't know he was married, but now she finds out he's married. Yeah. So yeah, she's gonna go by the house, see what kind of marriage they are, whether they're really separated, whether they're you know, we don't know what he told her. If they're separated. Sure. Uh, my wife's horrible, my wife's <laughs> Oh, I'm sure all of the above. I'm sure he told her all of that. So you she think he actually she could have went by um, the house to see it. Like, hey, is he really like living with her? Is she like he's sure. truth? Because I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I probably would too, but I, you know, I've been in, you know, with my my husband for like 29 years now. We were we've been married almost 26, but we were dating before that, of course. So and I, I don't remember. Thinking, I would have been I a keep kid. Up that she met him again at three o'clock. Three o'clock is sticking really? in my head. That she, yeah, left she clocked it. We know Paula. We know she clocked out at three o'clock. So you're right with that time. Okay, three o'clock is sticking in my head that she met him again at around three o'clock. Wow. Okay, she did clock out of work, so we have that record, so you're right on the money with that, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, do either of you think she had anything to do? I, I'm sorry, I Danny? I anything to do with it, but he might have told her, hey, I got I got problems, I got my wife's missing. Well, I we know that he said that the wife was missing with the children. Correct. Um, and also, we... A lot of the reports said that the wife always went on business trips, and he was probably the primary caretaker of the children. She did, correct. Okay, so right. So when he was having an affair with this woman, who was taking care of the children? Well, for one thing, um, Shanann took her little girls to North Carolina to visit their extended family for six weeks in right. June and July. And um, Chris went out there the last week of the vacation to be with the family. Um, so pretty much during the entire relationship with NK and Chris Watts, there they were his family was gone and out of the picture, you know, yeah, in yeah, North Carolina. He, he had full range. We don't know if he took Chris Watts to his house. Uh, not Chris Watts, I'm sorry. Correct. Uh, Chris Nicole. Uh, Nicole. We don't know if he took right. his house, told her all these things. And for the six weeks, he probably could have been the most... She might have been like, oh, my God, I can't believe this guy's married. I've been him every day for six weeks. Sure. You know, uh, you know I, I don't understand. 
Sure. Let me let me and hit probably, Pat here. I think the time they hung out like after work, they probably you know hung out together. Sure. And, oh, definitely. And, That's you know, exactly what they did. Dinner, but my wife like nothing. Chris was home at 3 p.m. with cops everywhere. Bumbly. Okay. Yeah. So he was home. Um, You're frozen up. Uh, yeah. I'm not. Tanya, I'm not seeing you. I see you, Danielle. I don't see Tanya. <laughs> yeah, a little frozen here. A little frozen, Taya. <coughs> I got a scratch. It's probably well, not correct. So how's your love life, Danielle? You know Paula and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow I'll be harassing you about something else. Who knows? Okay. Anytime. All right. Just I text you and you ignore me. It's the best. We have the best relationship. Yeah. Oh, she's okay, gone now. Oh. No, she's gone. She'll be back. We'll just wait for her. I don't see your cats running around, Paula. They were. They were running around over here by the door. So, no, I think Nicole knew um, what he did. I think so, too. And then she's like, whoa. And then she ran. Yeah, I'm back. Can you guys? There you are. Yeah, okay. we lost you for a minute. I have we were no discussing idea amongst the ourselves. Yeah, we think that like Nicole it's... knew. We think Nicole knew what he did, and got very nervous about it. Okay, but she was covering for him. She wasn't now, a participant. Think... She wasn't a participant in no. dumping the bodies, but she had knowledge of what he did. Wow. I believe. Okay. That. Now, do you think she? Oh, I just dropped my. My makeup brushes. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, do you think she, that he told her, or she just figured it out? I think he told her. I think he told her like something bad happens. I gotta take. I gotta go away or something. Or he might have told her. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. People are asking. Uh, do you think NK was involved or not? I think we kind of answered that she was involved after the fact with knowledge from Chris. An accessory um, after the fact. Okay. And so she could be charged with at least that. Yeah. Okay. I wow. I think he might have made a deal. Say, I'll confess. We don't know if he made a deal of saying, I'll confess to everything. Keep her out of it. Sure. You know? And a lot of people are saying that. That he confessed to everything so that we would all leave Nicole alone. Um, but, but categorizing him as a good person, like somebody with a heart and... You know, I, but, you know, again, we don't know because he killed his family. So how do we know what kind of party? Right. And I, I see him as a psychopath or a sociopath. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Absolutely. A sociopath. Absolutely. Okay. You got okay. to kill your children. Absolutely. You're young. Yeah. You're how young. can you kill your babies? He was 32 and he could have easily got divorced. Dump them, into oil, dump them into I oil drums. I mean, I the horror of just doing that alone. You could not make up a horror story or a horror film worse than that. I, you know, right? right. How how dare you? Mm -hmm. um, let's see fight. here. Because I supposedly they had sex when she came back at one o'clock. Supposedly they had sex. Right. And then they he might have said, "Hey, like I know you're cheating," or so, like she might have said, "I know you're cheating," or something happened, and she might have said, "Hey, I'm going to take the kids away from you. I'm going to leave and take the kids." I think so too. I do see and that see, happening. I believe like, that he. I believe they had sex, and I believe he strangled her after sex. I believe. So oh too, my! Mouth it off to him. Yeah. Like, okay. The woman would, you know. Okay. And that's the way they portrayed it in the Lifetime movie. And yeah. What I, yeah. What I did was. Um, I haven't book, seen that movie. I haven't seen that movie. No, and, and, and the book I wrote it as they did have um, sex, and then she went to sleep. And he woke her up by strangling her like an hour later. Um, and that's probably why didn't she fight back, Paula? What's your why did she not even scratch at him or anything? Because I think he overpowered her. Okay. okay. I think it was just she was half groggy. He overpowered okay. her and he just cut off her airway and she had no way to hmm. breathe, no way to fight back. Okay. And it was almost it, it was almost a sexual crime. Too because really? it was after sex, 
it was like autoerotic asphyxiation. So That's right. Paula sexual... brought this point up. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. There, there was a sexual factor involved in her strangulation. That's amazing. No one has ever said that but you. And you, like like I said, you know everything about the universe. So, uh, <laughs> well, and, it's true. People do like to get choked. Not me particularly, but people do like to get choked during sex, too. So and maybe, do you happening. guys think that Nicole Kessinger initiated that sort of creepy thing during sex and he enjoyed that? And that's how it started with Shanann. Do you I think, think that? I think possible? it started with his man lover. Because right. he was bisexual. People are questioning that, right? Well, Whether or not he I had think other... it started with his male lover, the autoerotic really? asphyxiation and the S and M. I think that started with his male lover, and he just really got into it, and it went too far. So you so believe that, gentlemen? I didn't even know about the male. Well, it's yeah, kind of they're, they're saying he's a troll and an attention seeker, and but who in the world would do that? You know, this gentleman came forward and said he had an affair. His name is Trent, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Had an affair with Chris, you know, not too long ago, and there was another woman who came forward and said the same thing. I, th I again, I think her name is Amanda, but again, everyone tries to debunk these two people and say that they're lying, but. What kind of, I mean, you, unless they're sociopaths themselves, what kind of person is going to come forward and say, yes, I had an affair with this psycho murderer? Right. Well, you believe attention, that attention, story. Yeah, well, attention seekers, you know, little people that are not, you know, all that, you know, correct in the head. But, sure. you know, if that that's also maybe the, the male lover. We know nobody's looking into the male lover. Maybe no. he was the one who orchestrated some of it. Um, Do you think yeah. Trent might have been involved? Well, this is a new light. We don't know. You have okay. to have a lot of strength. I mean, like, he buried his wife. He buried his children. You think he did it all by himself? No, I mean, I did. I thought that because the children were, you know, all of 38 pounds. And Shanann right. was, like, 145. But that's, you know, average, you know, woman size. And he was, he had been working out. And as I mentioned on my last show, um, you know, men can typically carry their wives, you know, whether they're asleep or whatever, you know, it's not, it's not really a big deal. And he did partially drag her down the stairs. Right. Yeah. So, um, now another point, this is fascinating. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not responding to chat. I just got two lovely ladies here and they're, uh, keeping me entertained and interested. Let me see here. Um, so, uh, true crime, true secret says, so if Paula is right, I'm going to show some of these. If Paula is right, she, the NK is a co-conspirator, hmm. um, because she did know after the fact, I assume. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. It's impossible. Nick was with his mom in Erie. Who are we talking about? Nick, um, uh, blah, 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 Stacia. Are we talking about Nick, um, Nick, uh, oh gosh, Atkinson? I, again, when I get lost in chat, I've completely lost the, the train of thought you, you folks are trying to, you know, push at me here. Um, first contact with NK was on August 13th. Is it, was it 5 p.m., Kid Canuck? Um, let me see here. He was texting NK all day. I don't know that he was. Um, okay, so, at, okay, this is how it went. At 6.16 in the morning... Um, Nicole Kessinger, her phone pinged in Frederick because she made a phone call. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it, it's out of her way, sort of, to go through Frederick. I think she was spying on them. Absolutely, and that's what yes. Uh -huh. well, that's how, what far is, wait, how far is Frederick from where her job site is? It might all be within the same little area. No, I, and usually when they ping, they usually ping. But it's not. I, You know, I wish I would have brought a map or something. Right. When you ping, you're usually pinging at the exact time. So I, I, I get lost in the translation of the ping. Because like if you hired me and we want to know where somebody is, I do too. And phone, we'll ping that phone right there. I mean, her call log could be that she was in. Okay. Pregnant. But um, again, you know, you're looking at cell towers. Maybe they didn't have uh, the cell towers are nearby and they pinged it at Frederick. You know, okay. I don't know how, I don't so know that's how possible, even though. You know, I, I come from one of the greatest cities in New York. Uh, I come from the greatest city, New York, right? Um, not to say that anybody else's city sure. is bad, but I'm saying we have, like, really good technology here. 
and our police force and our investigative staff is, is very one of the top. You know what I mean? I don't know about Colorado. This is like the only, is this the only? No, I don't either. It seems thing? like there are so many, there are so many bungled cases. Right. We don't know if they botched the case, if they know how to like no. work a crime scene. You know, no, exactly. You have to go through before you work a crime scene. Exactly. Um, now, there's another. Let's see here. I already told you earlier. Chris texted Troy at two forty-two p.m. and said the cops are here. Okay. Um, Troy was a gentleman that Chris Watts worked with. He bought a fire stick from him. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to. Wonderful guest. Oh, thank you. Wonderful guest, Tanya. Thank you for sharing with us. Aww. You guys are so sweet. I love these ladies. They're they're absolutely amazing. And Tammy, she thank says, you. what about Rourke? He broke the law. Um, yeah, and there's a couple things. I mean, Tammy fully believes that Nicole Kessinger was very much involved in all this. And I mean, all I of agree. it. I agree with Danny. I don't think she's involved after the fact. Yeah, I think she was definitely. I think she was definitely stalking Chris to get information about what he was all sure. about. Yeah, sure. but she wasn't there and strangling. What about her friend? There's a friend named Jim. I don't know if I've asked you this before, Paula. It was um, Nicole Kessinger's best guy friend, and I often relate him to David Smith, who's my best guy friend. Um, that she didn't. She was very sensitive about. Um, about Jim. She said, don't bother Jim. She was telling law enforcement, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. um, what did Jim have anything to do with it? Did he, did she confide in him after the fact? I think she that? confided in him. Okay. I don't think he had anything to do with it. I think he was her confidant. Interesting. Okay. And that's kind of what I think too, is that yeah. he had nothing to do with it. However, she was fearful if she confided in him that Chris confessed to her. Yes. Um, that, that this Jim guy would have to be honest in an interrogation, of course. I mean, who who would would not be if they're a normal human being, you know? Something really bugged me about the male lover. Okay, really? It's okay, just so sticking in the back of my head that he assisted in some way. Or sure. he helped carry in some way, or he helped dig the hole in right. some way. I believe that you think maybe Chris is the male lover jilted. Is the male lover jilted? They're only focusing on Nicole because yeah, because she was right then and there. You think that I think you... the male lover met Chris at the job site and helped him. Oh my gosh, really? Yes, could be, could be. Now, and, and I agree that with Danielle, Danielle that I don't hey, think they worked the crime scene correctly. Oh, I know they didn't. Oh yeah, that's you know, what I, something that, was. I'm that's sorry. What I think as well. That's what I think as well. They didn't. They didn't do this crime scene correct. No, I agree with that. And I know that in the trash can, literally in the garage, the um, officer who showed up that day. I don't know if it was Coonrod or if it was actually um, when Baumhover Baumover showed up later. I think it was Coonrod that he um, opened the trash can in the garage. And it had dolls and children's blankets and a perfectly good water bottle that, um, you know, baby Celeste is using in a bunch of photos that Shanann took on Facebook. Because to Chris, the kids were trash. Okay. Oh Look at how God. he disposed of them. He buried his wife, but he stuck his kids in oil drums. Oh, my God. Yeah. So they were trash. At least he gave a little honor to his wife. The kids were trash. Oh my God! And you know, it, it's psychologically. The, kid, the kids probably, the kids probably held him down, so he can't live his like crazy, like stupid life. Sure, yeah, and now sure. He's got a third baby on the way, and we don't know if the night did he know that she was pregnant. Yes, he did. Trip, or when he came, she came home. Um, he t she told him, I think I want to say in June, and they, you know, he killed them all in August. Okay. Um, but she. Uh, yeah, so he fully well knew it was a boy and, you know, they had named him and everything. Do you think he had that behavior or that attitude towards the children because he is a sociopath or a psychopath and he doesn't have real emotions? So yes. most of us, when we see our children, even, you know, my daughter's 22, it, 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 it's like, oh, my baby, you know. And no, I, he did not have those paternal emotions. Okay. Yeah. Wow. wow. They were trash. If he did, he would have he no remorse. He wouldn't have killed his kids. Correct. How do you hurt your child? 
I mean, in any way, you know, like and I said, I have a feeling that one of the children was not completely dead when he put her in the oil drum that she oh, was scratching at the side, trying to get out. Right. And she That's pushed her head underneath. Oh my God. That's another thing that Paula has brought up. The fact that with baby Bella, yeah, she sees that she was alive and to the extent where she was able to scratch at the side of the oil, oil drum. Right. It's possible. Yes. And I mean, I wonder if they could, now, could they not, Danny, uh, could they not drain that and actually check for that sort of thing now? Or would they, are they completely? I think, I think through, I, you know, the, the forensics and everything, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of forensics today, they're so sophisticated. I believe they probably could. They probably would find her, they would find the oil under her nails if she wasn't. Yeah, there. absolutely. Okay. I mean, we don't know. But it, would the oil not be under her nails because she was submerged in it? No. I, yeah, but you know what? They, they okay. could find a pebble. They could find a pebble on a driveway that is uh, linked to somebody's saliva. I mean, it, sure. you know. Yeah, little little fragments of metal from the side of the oil drum they could find under her nails. Oh, God. Oh, they didn't God. work the crime scene correctly. They no, did. they didn't. I, I believe and, they didn't. No, and I, I agree Chris was confessing to killing his wife, uh, Shanann, but he hadn't confessed to killing the babies yet. Um, and then when he took the plea de deal in November, a few months after the crime, he conf you know, he had to agree that he killed the babies as well. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe he didn't kill the babies right away. Or well, he didn't, or in his head, he didn't kill his babies. He just stuck them in a drum. That's well, I know that. Confessed. Now, Paula, what do you think about, I mean, his official final story um, that he told to another author is that he tried to smother the little girls with their pillows in the house before Shanann got home from her business trip. And then I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You don't think so, really? No. no. My, I have a friend that's really up on this. She won't go on camera right now, and she's with me, but she's up on this. And she told me that he, when he smothered one of the kids, the other child said, are you going to do the same thing to me? Yes, and that was in so the car out at the oil site. Right. Yeah, that, that aggravate like that just doesn't sit yeah. well with And yeah. you know, as Paula said, and as I've always feared that Bella, the older child who witnessed her baby sister being smothered and carried away, that she was not on yet when he put her in there. I mean Right. That poor little girl. Right. I mean, oh. Dear God, you know. I don't know how people could do that. I would have. Um, I have no children. I would have took both of those kids, with a heart in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't. I would take them. I would take anyone's children. I. That's how I got into the John Bonet case. My husband and I were going through fertility treatments. Um, at the time, my daughter was born in '98, and little John Bonet was killed in '96. And I kept thinking, my, you know, it, it's as clear as a bell to me that Patsy Ramsey did it. Oh, and yeah, um, oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody absolutely. Somebody. And I kept thinking if that woman was done with her, I would have taken I would have driven to Colorado and taken that little girl and loved her forever. You know, um, awful. Uh, Stacia, I'm going to pull this up here. Um, the way I saw it, there were two other grown people there. They told him to help hold Shanann down, causing a miscarriage from the struggle. He didn't kill those kids and he didn't know how. Um, they were killed. And that, that's another, thank you, Stacia. There's another entire school of thought, ladies, that um, Chris didn't do any of it, that Nicole Kessinger and her cohorts actually um, did the entire crime and simply threatened him. No, I, I no don't way. see that. No, no yeah, way. I don't see that either because if he's a sociopath, why would he confess? Right. He right. confessed to Nicole. I mean, he doesn't know Nicole that long. It's not like they had this torrid no. affair forever. They just started dating. Correct. Right. Right. But now, what about the what about the man? I mean, I think a man strangled her. So, what about the other? Sure. Lover? What the other one, and I, yeah. But see, yeah, why would yeah. this gentleman come forward and say I had an affair with Chris, and if he was guilty of anything, I don't right. know. Well, if no one even knew about him, he was. Seekers. A lot of it's pension seekers, you know. So sure. We don't know. I mean, we should probably investigate him, I think. And even though they've said, oh, no, he was lying and the other woman was lying. I don't know. I no. really don't know. He wasn't lying. Interesting. Oh, my God. I'm getting goosebumps. Um, let's see here. And Tammy, again, my dear friend, she says he doesn't know how Shanann died. And that is, um, again, part of that theory that, you know, he keeps flipping and waffling on how everyone died. 
And I, I think that honestly, oh yeah, to, this is Tammy again. Uh, Trent is all about, no, it's, I'm sorry, it's not. It's true crime, truth seeker. Trent is all about attention. Have you seen his Instagram? So this young man has an Instagram apparently that's very um, vivid. And, you know, he's kind of, you know, one of those type A personalities. And he's probably a Leo like me. <laughs> but um, I don't, you know, I haven't seen it. I haven't looked into him that much because I assumed it was all a hoax and that he was just being a jerk and, you know, trying to get uh, into the limelight. Never, never assume. Never assume. That's, the That's true. Never assume in something like this. I've never learned any that. Past anybody else either. I know because you know you're not a psychopath, but you don't know about your neighbor or your husband or your kid or you know whatever. You don't really know. Right. Um, that's frightening in itself. Oh my god. Um, Paula, oh, this yes. is something that we uh, discussed. I think, or I, I maybe, I maybe we didn't. Um, no, that's the wrong one. Oh well, Tammy's saying there's no proof that Chris did anything. Um, Except for his confession. Exactly. Right. His confession. That's what I always, I always refer back to. Um, now Paula, or Blaze is behind the left, my girlfriend's share. Paula was in K in any cult. Do you feel she was in a cult? She claimed she was just, I think she was Wiccan, you okay. know, and that's it. And she did have the crystals that she used for various type of healing or whatever. Well, she was first of all, all Wicca's not, Wicca not a cult. It's a federally no. recognized religion. It's akin to Native American shamanism. There's nothing dark about it. But there are you. people that go off on dark tangents with it. That's not Wicca. They sure, make sure. something on their own that leads to like court kind of Satanism Ooh, more than okay. that. Oh. I yeah, think she totally did right. controlling magic. I think she did magic on Chris. Really? I think she did have a dark side to her. Who's wow. Nicole. Nicole. I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking for battery. Don't mind me. I'm sorry, people. I'm looking for I mean, battery. you're fine. You're fine. When you disappear, we'll remember you fondly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now, um, Chris has written some letters to another, um, you know, armchair detective woman who. Oh, I hear the party. Yay, party. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're all stuck here. No, but. Um, that he wrote some letters to and from a woman. Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name, but um, my dear friend from True Crime in Colorado, which is now called Unmasking, um, Nessa, she actually talked about some of these letters where he's saying that, I mean, he's pretty much saying Nicole had nothing to do with the crimes, but she had, you know, something like a Jezebel spirit had taken over her, causing her to be very influential on, you know, he called himself a weak and unsuspecting or something like that. Man. Right. right. Um, do you think that's true? Do you think something dark took over her and influenced him in some sort of metaphysical way? I, I, I don't I think she drew in the dark side to her. Okay. And I think she did magic um, to control him. Wow. Interesting. You and now, no, she can't implant something that's not already in his head. She okay. can exacerbate it. She can manifest it to have it happen faster. But okay. she can't implant, oh, you're suddenly a murderer in his head. No. It's got to be something that's in him already. Okay. Okay, so she didn't, you know, put a spell on him that made him be a murderer so, overnight. No. It and doesn't even, work like that. Sure, and even in these letters to this other woman, um, Chris is saying, essentially, it, you know, Nicole had nothing to do with the murders except for spiritually influencing me to be a bad guy, you know. So I think she I, was spiritually influencing Chris to be free and to be okay. with her. Oh, and no matter what, it took, and no matter okay. what it took to get to that point, okay. So be it. What if she did a love spell? Yeah, I think it might have been something that simple too. And it, you know, all this weird stuff is in my book too. Um, and that's another point, uh, Paula. I wanted to bring up. There was that laughter in the closet, that child's laughter in the closet when the two police women were going through the house. Right. Uh, in my book, I wrote uh, basically that it was little Bella. It was her spirit. And what do you mm -hmm. see? Was that really Bella or Celeste or was it just a doll that they stepped on or something weird like that? I, I think mean, it was Bella. I think yeah. it was Bella. And I think it was her letting them know that she transitioned over and that she was happy. 
Okay, good. And and where do you see them now? Are they happy? Are they okay? They're um, happy. They're together. Oh, wow. The unborn child was born. He's a little okay. boy. And they're happy and together. And um, oh, I think they influenced Chris quite a bit in his dreams and stuff to tell the good. truth. Good. I'm they, glad they do. I want, I want I them to. Him. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said, I hope they haunt him. You know, like the, yeah. The, the, I, I hope they really haunt him. him. Yeah. Uh -huh. I really do. And and where do you think this Nicole woman is now, Paula? If you were to just pick a location, what do you think? I'm getting Nevada. Really? Okay. Okay, everybody, let's turn our hunt to Nevada. We can probably track her down. Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think she was pregnant or had his child? No. Okay. I do. I you don't do. know why. I okay. get that feeling, but then again, you know, like I said, I'm not really a psychic. I just get hit in the face with certain things and that. Uh -huh. really well, I could be wrong. wrong. You're never you wrong. Stop. Colorado <laughs> to locate somebody. I could locate her from New York, so we could always find where she is. You can find where she is. Oh right. my I mean, goodness! If you're doing interviews and you're trying to prove something, I would always suggest using somebody local, um, you know, and somebody that's licensed in that state. Sure. You know, and that's always for like you know uh, legal legality. Sure. You know, yeah. It's like, oh well, you have got all this information, but you're not licensed in the state, so they could throw everything out of court. So you know, you want to sure. make sure every all your dots and all your T's are crossed. Well, your T's and dots, I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> whatever <laughs> it is. Um, now, if we were to... On card every once in a while, so... Now, if we were to just ask you to find out, and, and I don't want this woman harassed, you know? Oh, no. Um, no because she might be completely locate. innocent. You could locate her for us. Yes. Okay. Okay. She could be innocent in the fact of the murders. Is she innocent that she knew him? No. So she's not. No. So she's not 100% innocent. Nobody's 100% right. innocent of anything. Right. Right. Um, so it's possible that we could find her and I'll talk to you, uh, you know, later tomorrow, you know, off stage right. here. She could have stayed, she could have stayed local. Okay. You know, I, I, I would like to know what goes on in the, um, you know, in the, in Colorado. I, like, I haven't been there. I don't know. I don't know if it's a big city. It's a small town. Everybody knows everybody, you know. Well, it's a, it's um, a few big cities was, scattered with mountains. Wasn't she in her thirties when she was? Yeah. 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 So she was. Probably like, you know, she probably had grand those ideas like, oh, this is going to be my, my husband. I'm going to have right. kids. I'm mm -hmm. going to settle down. You know, this is the great, the greatest guy ever. Sure. I agree. I agree. She had those text. thoughts. Crazy text messages. You know, we saw that on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all over the place. Everything they did. Um, now, Stacia's saying they had a doll that peed so they can giggle. Um Oh, you had a doll that peed so they can giggle. I had so many little giggly dolls, too, when I was <laughs> little. Yeah. Um, uh, Cher is saying, I'll find her. I bet you could, Cher. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I keep telling Cher to be a private detective or be an attorney because she's awesome at this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Kid Kanaka is saying, uh, hold on, show, show, show. Um, and I always hit the wrong one, right, Stacia? But thin air danny she's actually vanished into thin air that is correct um well, you haven't had me on it yet no, don't give me a don't give me a challenge okay so i'm giving you a challenge let's All find right. this girl well, let's find her. i'll find her so we, we oh my god that's amazing. nobody's in thin air nobody's ever in no thin air. and i think place. honestly she's cut her hair she's got you know dyed it blonde or red or something and she's you know, she has a very plain look. And I think that with makeup and colored contacts, she could disappear. I mean, Paula, do you think that's what she did? Yes. Change her appearance? Does she need, I mean, yes. does she really need to disappear? I mean, this might have died down already. No, no. People are harassing her and saying she did it or she was part of the, um, you know, conspiracy. And, and I feel terrible if they're wrong. You know, I see her as innocent. And even though, you know, again, she's not a very likable lady um, because she is the mistress and her voice is kind of grating, you know, whatever. Um, so I don't know um, that that's one of the primary reasons why people. Are you saying I think, that she sounds like a Karen? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. 
it's very annoying and you know people tell me my voice is so horribly annoying that it you know not like in case but similar to hers because you know in, in annoyance level or whatever so right. i get that you know i get, i understand why people wouldn't like someone because of their voice but um and the other reason is because she was a mistress and they think that she had something to do with the crime, which I do not. Um, but if she had knowledge. Well, it's like that, going back to the Scott Peterson trial. Yes. Um, his mistress took a lot of heat. And right, they she did. She involved, and she, she had did. to disappear. And people were harassing her and she was totally innocent of everything. Of everything. And she didn't even know he was married. Um, right. right. Uh, what, what's There's her name? Nicole didn't know he was married either. Well. Right. We don't know. Um, I, we don't know that. She said that Amber Fry. Fry. Amber Fry. I was going to say Amber Heidi Fry. Fry. Okay, yeah. Amber. Yeah, and oh, she was. Said, you know what? They did work in the same company. They so did. If she had payroll records. He would probably have like you know three or four to dot. But she probably knew. He had sure. Had, you know, it's so many different questions. Well, I think the story he sold to her was that he was married, but separated. He did sleep in the basement sometimes, I want to say, but they had a bed down there for her parents when um, they visited um, because all the bedrooms were taken up with either the children or with the children's playroom, and one was her office. Right, but that's the oldest story in the book, you know, oh, I'm not right. really mad. We're separated. We don't have sex. Oh, sure. I'm sure all cheating men yeah. would say that to their. He's pregnant. You know, like all of a sudden the wife's pregnant again. You know what I mean? So, so how did that happen? Know. Right. Right. Exactly. If you don't even sleep in the same room with her, how in the world did that happen? Um, let's see here. The doll in the closet. The doll giggle in the closet is not the same as Kessinger's giggle. No, Nicole Kessinger left a creepy voicemail or two for Chris during their dating, you know, life that um, where she, you know, she has a very deep, heavy voice. She sounds like a 90 year old woman, but in these recordings, I don't know if she used one of those voice altering um, apps or a machine or something, but she has a very high pitched voice and then a high pitched giggle. It sounded similar to the giggle in the closet, but the giggle in the closet sounded just like a little kid. It did yeah. not sound like this woman altering her voice or whatever. No right. way. No right. way. I, mean, I believe in the spirits. I do believe. Oh, I yeah. definitely do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And what do you think about reincarnation, Paula? Do you think it's possible they'll all be together again, the family in, in this Absolutely. world? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. I'm not going to cry. Okay, good. Yeah. And again, if you've read No Inclination, you'll see my opinion on all that. Um, the way in the story wraps, I think, is kind of positive and upbeat. But I wanted to see what you think about in reality, if that could happen. And I thank you. That makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that, uh, let's see here. I wish I lived in Texas. Uh, or, 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 I'm sorry. I wish I lived in Texas because I want to drive by that house that I found on public records. Ooh, Megan knows something here. Interesting. So maybe it's Texas. Maybe, Danny, you can start there. <laughs> I'd say start Nevada and Texas looking for this woman. <laughs> I keep picking up a desert setting. Okay. So she's in Nevada. She's yeah. like outside Nevada. of Vegas, kind of in the desert. Sure. Wow. Close enough to a big city, but not in a and big we city. We certainly get lost in that area. I know yeah. I've driven through that desert so many times. There's tiny little hick towns, whatever. And the you know? cost of living is very cheap there on the outskirts. It is. Of Vegas. Definitely. So she could easily afford it. And you can easily Def pack up your car and just go there. Like you could, yeah. sure. Like if we went yeah. if we were from New York, we went to Connecticut and New Jersey. You know? Right. So we could easily go to Nevada. Oh, no, definitely. Yeah. You could. And live in, like, what is that town? Victorville or yeah, Apple uh, Valley or whatever? Did we ever see if her job was big enough that maybe they relocated her? Um, she worked for an agency that um, was contracted by Anna Darko. So she actually got her payroll, her paychecks from another party. Um, so That's an what, company, isn't it? It is. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. So you could easily, oh, yeah. they probably do cover Nevada too. So she could probably easily just get. Uh, sure. Sure. Definitely. So you, go, you go work for CVS and transfer. I knew somebody that worked at CVS in New York and they transferred sure. to CVS in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, so it's possible that she could have transferred within her company. 
And speaking, are you talking about Child Protective Services? Is that what you work for? CPS? No, no, no. no. I'm just saying in general. Like any, no, oh, CVS, like this, the drugstore chain. Oh, got it, got like it, something CVS. Something so simple, like something is so simple as CVS, the drugstore You can chain, transfer, like, well, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. you can actually transfer. I didn't know you could do that until I met somebody that worked there. No, you can. You can actually do, yeah, you can actually transfer any, also, any yeah, job. Yeah, right. Well, except my job, but you know. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. Well, you could. Okay, you can work in any around. town. Yeah. And is that difficult to get your private eye license? Because I always wanted to do that when I was a little girl. I would imagine hanging a shingle and everything. <laughs> That's weird, right? Glam- it's not as glamorous as you think it is. And especially nowadays with all the social media and everybody's just out there trying to be their own private investigator. Sure. Uh, the industry has gone down. Uh, in New York State, uh, you have to be over 25 years of age to be a licensed private eye. I'm you barely naked. Have- I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just only one for six months. Um, there you go. <laughs> you have to, ha- you have to have three years of apprenticeship under a licensed private investigator. Oh wow! Um, yeah, and they do, ch- they do a m- massive background check. On Good. As an apprenticeship, you also have to then like sign off on reports. It's extensive. You know, I, I come bet. from, I come from a, my father is a, was a private investigator. I like I said before, he's now semi retired. He's retired. Yeah. Um, he's retired because he got involved in a very bad uh, investigation as well. That kind of went sour for him. Oh. So if your readers do Google me, they will see that. But um, uh, but you know, so again, like, and, and that's just reiterating. That's not always glamorous. You know what I mean? So there's sure. sometimes there's a gray area on that. Um, and they do check you out. And a lot of it is investigating um, cheating husbands and that type of thing, right? I'd imagine, well, right? Well, well, yes and no. I mean, we do that, but now New York State has a no fault, uh, no fault divorce. So oh, you don't really need to have uh, be cheating to have actual divorce. Now, years ago, you'd have to actually catch somebody. In the you house. had to have a cause to divorce, right? Right. right. But when you do, when I do do with matrimonial cases, a lot of it's for custody reasons. Um, you know, they don't want their spouse maybe to get custody. I have I had a woman. One of my saddest stories was I had this beautiful woman. She had brain cancer and she was dying. Oh. And her husband was a real husband was um sorry for your readers, but he was a real piece of shit. Okay. Sure. So you know, she would fall and he wouldn't even he would leave her standing, like let her on the like, you know, her Oh my like, god. Yeah, he would just leave her there. We found out he was cheating. Um, the reason why that she didn't care about the cheating, but she wanted to prove that he was cheating was because when she died, she didn't want him to have custody. She wanted to make sure, sure her, her daughter went to somebody that was going to care for her. Sure. You know, unfortunately I know she did pass. I don't know, um, what had happened. And that was a few years ago and she was, I met her and she was a very beautiful person. So, oh, I bet. I am so sorry. She's looking over terrible. her daughter and, you know, and again, she was married to like, again, you're, you're married to somebody. You don't know. You get sick, and all of a sudden, he turns out to be shit. Oh my god! Yeah. And he had a mistress, you know. Oh. And not and not all these mistresses are you know a hundred percent innocent. Oh you know, no. They they know and they don't know. They find things out. And women sure. are just as evil as men. I got to, and you know, as a woman, I'm saying this, but women are naive and they're also evil. They could be as evil as men. They can, or worse. I know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Evil is Hello. Men. You hear that? Yes. How are you? Uh, how are you? Your I'm husband? Evil. I'm really cute. I know, but you're you're not a killer either. I'm not a killer. I'm not a killer <laughs> that we know of, <laughs> yeah. right? This is Stephen's house that we're broadcasting live from. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. We love yes. her. We love her. Aw, <laughs> we love her too. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, anyone can pop in. I told my daughter, maybe one day you could pop into my video. She won't. No. My husband won't either. No I way. No way. She's very knowledgeable, but she, we started well drinking. I got to be uh, honest. Bro, we're all drinking. So sure, all... Oh, how funny. Uh, well, we yeah, can go yeah, ahead and wrap it here. I know you show. ladies both have a tight schedule um, yeah. today. I mean, oh my gosh. Thank you. So Paula, do you have any more final words, any psychic visions about the case that we may not know about? That the family is definitely haunting Chris. He doesn't sleep well. He doesn't Good. eat well. He's unhappy. Good. I think he put on a lot of weight because he's stuffing his feelings. Yeah, that's right. And um, he's being haunted by the family and by the memories. Good. And I, I think mean, you Danny, think 
And I think Danny will find NK for you. I think she will. I yeah. think he's gonna, oh he's my god. He's gonna hang himself in his cell. Hopefully he will we'll take this yeah. money out. We'll yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Paula, do you think he's gonna have an early demise of some sort? Yes. Okay. He'll either be shanked or he'll commit suicide. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Um he might go maybe Jeffrey Epstein will go kill him too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, come on. <laughs> I'm so not political. I don't even bother with that stuff. But, um, but that's, Danny, another, that's another topic. Like, who killed Jeffrey Epstein? He didn't kill himself. But we'll yeah, right. Whole, that's for another nobody, time. Nobody knows. I have no idea. Um, let's see. Electronically, then she's a clock. And we're talking about her clocking in. I'm sorry I haven't been up with all the chat, ladies and gents. I, I really... Uh, I've been fascinated by talking to these women here that I haven't really kept up with it. But again, if everybody, um, you can leave a comment in the chat or you can leave a comment under the video, either here in Facebook and subscribe to my channel. I'm giving away one more free signed copy of No Inclination next week. Um, so, Danny, do you have any final words, too, um, about the case or what, you know, what? Uh, no, but I'm going to try. I mean, will try to I will try to prove your your reader's wrong and I will try to find her whereabouts. I love but, that. I love that. You're awesome. And if oh anybody wants to contact me, I'm on Facebook. Yeah. And they can just uh, look me up on Facebook and contact me. I've got different pages on Facebook. Paula Forrester's Mysterious Ways. Um, my main name, Paula Forrester, but it's a private page, so you'd have to friend me to be on it. Sure. Um, but you can message me through there if uh, somebody wants a reading or they want to talk more about the case, they can get a hold of me through Facebook. I will say that Paula's, Wonderful. Readings, are on the money. Paula's readings are on the money. So if anybody has doubt, Jeez. speak to Paula. She Ask her specific questions like what were they wearing, when, when is it going to happen, and she will give you the right answer. She is the real deal. Oh, my gosh. She's amazing. She I, know, I know Paula for Thank you. Incredible stuff she does. Both you gals. I'm going to put a link to um, your stuff below the video as well. Um, and will you guys both come on again maybe next? Oh, sure. Week? Yes. And hopefully okay. we get a party. Thank <laughs> you. Absolutely. And yes. thank you so much for being here today. I know you, again, I know you guys are both on a tight schedule and I appreciate it. I don't want to keep it going thank much you, longer thank than. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, very thank welcome. you for inviting us. Very welcome. I love you guys. You're awesome. Love you too. My address is dp at i s p y f o r y o u dot com. So it's dp. My initials Danielle Farco at i spy for you spelled out. Awesome. I'll put that down here too. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, thank you all my uh, viewers and I appreciate you being here and I, you know, our little channel is growing and I'm learning technical stuff sort of, but I'm very happy you guys were here and, and thank you again to everybody and um, we'll see you soon. I'm going to be here tomorrow night. Everybody okay. Thank yep. you. Thank you. I'm going to be here you. tomorrow with Tammy. Thanks again, guys. Have a good Bye, night. Hi, Ann. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.